Welcome to Siege Pong. In this short video, I'll teach you to play the party game for gamers. In Siege Pong, two rival castles are locked in a gruesome siege. To triumph, build better than your enemy, enhancing and defending your castle from attack while launching assaults of your own. You'll march knights to battle, imbue throws with deadly power, and lay fatal traps for your opponents. Balance skill of hand and skill of mind as you build a monument to your might and lay your enemy in ruin. To begin, you'll need a flat surface where the battles can unfold, and some lords and ladies to join you in the mayhem. Adult beverages are optional. The deck of fate supplies risks and resources for you to steer to your advantage. And just like beer pong, you'll need some party cups and ping pong balls. The former to build fortresses, the latter to tear them down. Before the siege can begin, each team will build their own starting castles. Distribute equal cups to both sides. A standard game is played with 12. Arrange your cups in rows of four, where three stand upright and one is turned over. In each row, the three upright cups are called towers. Towers are the essential unit of each castle. Think of them as the backbones of your fortress. Each tower should be partially filled with some liquid or other weight to help it remain stable during play. The remaining downright cups are called terrain and will play an important support role to the towers in your castle. Each team builds four at a time, arranging three towers and one terrain, then waiting for enemy placement before moving on to place their next cluster of four. These towers and terrain can be built anywhere on your side, but each cup must touch at least one other cup in the castle, and cups cannot be nested inside other cups. How you build determines the point value of your castle. Every tower is worth 1 to 3 points depending on its tier level. These tier 1 towers are worth 1 point each. Terrain are never worth points, but can be built upon, raising your towers to a higher tier of value. Terrain can also be built on top of your towers, helping to shield them from incoming throws. High towers are worth more points and will let you play some powerful cards, but be warned, lofty castles are precarious. You and your teammate must balance stability and point value, because in this siege, whichever castle can defend the most points will ultimately win. Once a cluster placement is agreed upon, it is final and should not be moved again during this initial build. Remember to take the measure of your enemy while building. How many points is their castle worth? What are its strengths and weaknesses? What would make your castle stronger or more valuable than theirs? When all cups are placed, tally the point scores of each castle. The team with more points will take the first turn. Now, begin by dealing three cards to each player. Players can show their hand to their partner, but cannot trade cards. The Deck of Fate will be placed along the table's edge near the middle of the battlefield. Flip over the top three cards in a row, perpendicular to the deck. These three cards form the queue, which will remain visible throughout the game. Opposite the Deck of Fate, discards will form a face-up pile we call the Boneyard. On the rear of each card, the order of play is listed, the three stages of a turn in Siege Pong. During their turn, a team will first draw and discard, selecting a new card for their hand and another to destroy. Then, they will play cards from their hand to enhance their attacks and fortify their castle. And finally, they will attack the other team by marching knights into battle and sinking throws into enemy cups. During draw and discard, a player can select from the visible cards in the queue or from the unknown top card of the Deck of Fate. Of these four, they will select one card to add to their hand and one card to destroy, discarding it onto the Boneyard. In this way, each player will have some control over which cards come into play and which cards don't. After drawing and discarding, a player will replace any empty slots in the queue with the top card of the deck, so the queue is full for their teammate. Their partner will then likewise choose one card for their hand and one card to destroy, sending the destroyed card to the boneyard and then, of course, replacing the queue. After your team has drawn and discarded, play moves to the play card stage, when a team will play as many cards as they want, making sure their hand is down to three or fewer cards by the stage's end. There are several different types of cards in the deck. Cup grades are construction cards, which add options for building, each card describes how it can be used in your castle. Cupgrades usually attach to a specific tower, giving that castle some boost or bane. When placing a cupgrade, you may steady the tower with one hand while you place the card with the other. If you are placing cupgrades on an enemy tower, 
it is good sportsmanship to let them complete the placement. Cup grades remain in play until their cup is pulled or until they are destroyed by other means. Special throws are one-use power-ups that will enhance the throw with some special destructive force. Players cannot combine the effects of multiple special throw cards toward a single throw attempt. Instead, multiple special throws will apply to consecutive attempts made by that player. Display your special throws near your castle so they are visible and discard them once they have been used. Class cards grant a roll and special powers to a player, allowing them to somehow bend or break the normal rules of play. Each class card has at least one passive ability, as well as one sync ability, which activates every time a player sinks a ball in a cup as that class. Class cards remain in play until they are discarded or destroyed, and cannot be killed by enemy knights. Players must discard their current class if they wish to play a new one. Knights are the mobile infantry of Siege Pong marching against the enemy during a team's attack stage. When placing a knight, see that the corner of the card touches a cup in your castle, as his feet point toward the enemy. The closer that cup is to enemy lines, the sooner your knight will engage the opponent. In addition to their usual mechanics, every card in Siege Pong is worth some amount of coin. Players always have the option to spend their cards instead of playing them. During their play card stage, a player can use coin to buy one additional action, a diagram on the rear of each card shows the cost of these actions. Players can buy one extra throw, a terrain, or a tower for their castle, or they could pay to destroy a terrain, a tower, or a card anywhere afield. The ability to spend cards for coin expands the strategic options available to players. Cards that have already been played cannot later be spent for coin, and there is no benefit to overpaying for an action. After a team has finished playing cards, they commence their attack. During attack stage, each teammate first must, I repeat, must move any knights they have afield, marching them to battle. These brave knights will always march toward the enemy and can never retreat or move back toward their home castle. The movement markers on the top and bottom of the card control the knight's march. To move a knight, firmly place the tip of your thumb on the one marker, easing your thumb down to make contact with the table. Then, with your thumb tip on the marker, pivot your thumb pad to turn the knight up to 180 degrees. Next, place the tip of your thumb onto the 2 marker, and using the same motion, pivot your knight so he once more faces the enemy. The first step sets the knight's direction, and the second step continues his course. You can use this two-step motion to maneuver knights toward and around objects on the battlefield. A knight will destroy any cup grades, cups, or other knights he makes contact with when marching, but he will perish in the process. Fortifications and other cup grades can help protect your castle from enemy knights. A cup grade will also absorb a knight's attack, helping protect your foundation cups. If a knight does manage to get through to your towers or terrain, the damage he inflicts can be severe. After marching, each teammate will take their throws and attempt to sink enemy towers, keeping their elbows behind the table's edge. Sunk towers are pulled with one hand by their owner. Cups that fall as a result are collateral damage. Each player automatically gets one throw each turn, as well as any additional throws they have gained through playing or spending cards. After a team has taken all their throws, play moves to the other team, who will then likewise draw and discard, play cards, and attack. Disrupt cards break this back and forth rhythm. Disrupts can be played any time, even during another team's turn. They take effect immediately and are disruptive. Each disrupt card describes how and when it can be used. Disrupts go on the boneyard after use and normal turn order continues until one team fulfills a win condition. There are three different ways to win in Siege Pong. Total destruction is the most common. If your opponent's castle ever reaches zero points while yours has value, you win, period. Next is Heroic Build. Build a mighty castle of great point value, and your enemies are forced to concede. In a standard game, 18 points is a heroic build, but you can't build win on your first turn. See the rules for information. The final condition is the spoils of attrition. A siege can only last so long. Once the last card has been drawn, including all cards from the queue, the siege has run its course. Each team will play cards and attack. When this final turn is over, the team with more points wins. For more information, visit SiegePong.com. Now go play!